Good afternoon. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you for joining us today. As Claudia mentioned, we launched the Bridge Collaborative in 2016 as a global platform to drive the kinds of changes we think are needed across the global health, development, and environment communities. And I think the evidence base is clear and only getting stronger that the challenges facing each of these communities are tightly interconnected. The Sustainable Development Goals provides a really important framework for the kinds of progress needed. Yet still, the reality is that most organizations and these communities writ large are still trying to solve problems on their own. So the environmental organizations are solving environment problems, the education solving environment, health solving health, and so on. And there's a great quote by the famous actor Lily Tomlin. Um, and she said, we are all in this together, but by ourselves. And I think that quote really resonates well with me as I think about the report Bigger Change Faster Today. And can we start to maybe prove Lily wrong and that a different way can be more powerful where we're actually working together towards our shared aims? That's really what the Bridge Collaborative is about. We are focused on creating the evidence, the networks, and the leadership to help drive bigger change faster for people in a sustainable future. And in our work, um, we are guided by these four partner organizations. Um, again, TNC, PATH, Duke University, and IFPRI, our host today. And uh, we, have, uh, we are led by a secretariat of the four members shown on this slide. We'll be hearing from most of these folks in case studies that dive into the Bigger Change Fast report during our talk today. I want to give just a brief overview of our work. We're focused around three main pillars in the Bridge Collaborative. The first pillar is around amplifying impact. And this is where we really dive deep with strategy teams all around the world to, to demonstrate and expand what is possible through integrated solutions. On the screen are just a couple of the kinds of projects that will give you a feel for what we do. We're going to hear more from Catherine about lab cultured proteins work and looking at the environmental health and development opportunities that present. Um, we are looking at how to integrate environmental solutions into humanitarian assistance through refugee action for people on the planet. And we are also looking at places where endangered species work in the US, particularly in California, can also align with human health outcomes in somewhat exciting and a, a bit unexpected ways. The second is around activating capacity. There are so many teams out there poised to do more, to deliver bigger change faster around health development and environment. And we have been focused on um, tools and approaches that can support these teams. Most notably, as shown in the middle, our practitioner's guide, which provides guidance on how to use evidence across sectors and orient that towards action planning more strongly. We've been working with teams around the world to try to put that into practice and continue to evolve our approaches. The third and final pillar is around unlocking resources. We have teams ready to do this. We need more resources and incentives for them to be able to do this in an integrated way. The two things featured um, in the images are around some analysis we've done of the integrated funding sector and what is possible now, and also, of course, the report that will be the focus of our conversation today. So bigger change faster. Um, as Claudia mentioned, it is a long title. Um, integrated work needs to bring together these parts across health, development, and environment to create a sustainable future. We were honored to be able to partner with the UN Development Program to co-author this report, which we released last month around UN Week. And um, this report is strongly motivated by the Sustainable Development Goals. We identify three challenges in the report where one thing is really clear. If we're to achieve as a global community the progress needed, we must work together on these on these challenge areas, if we fail to do that, we are not going to achieve the progress that is needed. Within those three challenge areas, we identify nine planetary health actions that we think need greater attention and investment now to drive the type of integrated progress needed. The report is available on the Bridge Collaborative website, on the calendar invite for this meeting, as well as on the UN Development Program's website. Let me now walk through the main components of the report as an overview before we get to the case studies. The first challenge is around accelerating a low carbon, clean air, and environmentally friendly energy future for all. So access to modern energy is essential to reduce poverty and to support rising living standards. Yet global reliance on fossil fuels is driving climate change and contributes strongly to air pollution being the fifth leading health risk factor globally for deaths. A low carbon renewable energy future is clearly needed and needed fast. Yet embedded in this pathway is also a paradox rarely recognized, that expanding renewable energy is critical, yet 
it often has a large footprint and impact on lands and waters. How can we expand renewable energy, which is necessary, but do so in a way that decouples from those environmental impacts? For this challenge area, we identify three cross-sector actions to focus on. First, to prioritize um, and incentivize renewable energy that leads to improved equitable access to energy and avoids the environmental harm I just spoke about. Groups often do one or two, but seldom achieve all three of those aspects in a strategic way. Second, and we're seeing much more progress here, I would say in the last couple of years, is to integrate health decision makers and stakeholders into discussions about what energy system futures look like at a national level. Third, we focus on the still um, strong need to develop better technologies for household um, cooking, for fuels and technologies that are clean, renewable energy, commercially viable and acceptable to the users in those households. The second challenge area, this is the one where IFPRI has really been a global leader and um, is around transforming the global food system for health and sustainability. Food is an essential uh, human need and an integral part of culture, yet the global food system currently is a leading driver of biodiversity loss and contributes to climate change. At the same time, the food system is not meeting the nutritional needs of billions of people around the world, and unhealthy diets and malnutrition are the leading factors causing poor health around the world. There are many efforts underway, really inspiring efforts, and within that we highlight four actions for progress. First is advancing, integrating, uh, advancing uh, environmental concerns within national dietary guidelines, so they work for nutrition, health, and the environment. Second is around expanding interventions to empower smallholder women farmers. Third is around promoting sustainable agricultural intensification that's consistent with improving rural livelihoods, especially for the poor. And finally, supporting more open trade regimes that can allow redistribution of food production and, um, and consumption of food in ways that improve both environment and nutrition outcomes. The third and final challenge we highlight in the report is to expand safe sanitation and wastewater treatment for both people and nature. Still over half of the global population lacks access to safely managed sanitation. That's a staggering need and recognizing that that water that causes water contamination um, from sewage that drives a large health burden of diarrheal disease and also feeds through to having an impact on undernutrition. Health problems that themselves um, limit a rise out of poverty, which is so critical to the sustainable development goals. This pollution also um, causes untreated wastewater, which is a leading driver of threat to freshwater and marine biodiversity around the world. So tightly linked challenges for people in nature. In the report, we highlight two actions that can be taken to help make progress. The first is around tackling the whole sanitation problem across a project region, so we really can get to the scale needed to deliver impact for people and nature together. The second is around integrating nature-based approaches with conventional built infrastructure in ways that can maximize the benefits and address the weaknesses of each of the approaches on their own. Those are the challenges and the actions that we highlight in the report, and the case studies will be diving further into each of these components. I want to end um, on a note of what our work is currently focusing on with the Bridge Collaborative going forward. There are, many hopeful there are many teams that are advancing really hopeful and exciting solutions for sustainable development goals and for the kind of integrated progress we're, we need. But as Claudia mentioned, we are still well behind achieving most of the sustainable development goals by 2030. We all need to act differently and we need to really move out of the silos that we are finding ourselves still in too often that prevent the kinds of bigger change faster needed. How can we better support these teams around the world that are taking these kinds of steps a small but we hope important step that we are taking through the Bridge Collaborative this year is launching what we have called the Bridge Spark Fund. In short, the purpose of the fund is to directly support teams advancing innovative cross sector solutions uh, towards the three challenge areas that we um, focus on in the Bigger Change Faster report. I should note that the request for proposals has already closed, unfortunately, but I'm excited to announce that we have selected 50 teams where we're going to be working with those teams to strengthen their integrated ideas by bringing the development, health, and environmental focus to their projects and helping them deliver stronger solutions for impact in the next one and the next five years towards sustainable development goals. Ultimately, we'll have four teams that are um, receiving $150,000 awards and will be actually putting their ideas into action. It's truly energizing to be here and to be thinking about these issues and making progress towards a more integrated future for people on the planet. 
With that, I want to thank you um, for joining us again, and I'll pass back to Claudia, um, who will introduce the first case study.